So I'm looking at myself on the computer here. <laughs> So what I'm going to do, I'm part of a Christian creative Facebook group and um, I joined a 30 day quarantine art challenge. And so we're going to be doing seven days of art challenges. This is the third day. And the third challenge was to do something live. And so that's no problem for me because I am a YouTube creator anyway, over 700 videos. So going live is not not that intimidating to me hello hello so i'm going to actually switch my camera over above my drafting table here my grandfather built this probably 60 years or so ago so it's one of the things that i have of his that's very um important to me because he was an artist and he died when i was about 12 or 13 years old and I, he's carried on the genes through me and the, the legacy continues of being an artist. Um, I'm very grateful. I'm self-taught, painted for over 20 years. And so what I'm going to do today is just a kind of a fun, funky, I saw somebody painting on one of the Facebook groups or whatever. And it was this, uh, creation process that I thought was pretty cool about the the theory it was kind of like a moon with a silhouette on a piece of land that was floating and I really thought that was a cool idea so that's what we're going to do I'm going to switch my camera I'm going to move it over to my table so the, the camera's going to get jiggy for a little bit just bear with me okay make sure the I think it's I think it's in the middle of the, the table anyway so let me just tell you my thought process on how I go about thinking about things so I wanted to do a moon with a deep colored sky behind it and uh, I'm starting with a just a pre-primed canvas so what I did was I cut out a circle from contact paper and then I printed out a silhouette of a couple because I want, I want to paint something that's relaxing and that uh, exudes peace and comfort in a time frame like this. So it's just a couple and they're going to be, the silhouette is going to be in front of the moon. So I've got this contact paper. This just helps me create a circle just a little bit easier. By blocking off part of the canvas so get my ruler out and just figure out about the middle point you know just so that I'm kind of in the middle here all right so there's my contact paper you can see that I got a piece of contact paper stuck down and that'll just help me keep colors off of that lighter area but that's going to be painted in as well but that just keeps the paint away from it for the time being and then I can go ahead and paint in my background and then move forward from there so I was thinking well, do I want it to look kind of realistic? And I kind of do, kind of don't, but I think I'm going to go more realistic. So we're going to get busy. I'm going to use Deco Art paints because they're craft paints. They dry a little bit quicker instead of like two paints, you know, like Master's Touch or, you know, Liquitex. Those are higher grade paints, but they take longer to dry. And so when you're, you know, working where you've got a little bit of a time crunch or like I'm trying to do this in under an hour then I'm going to use the acrylic paints that are in bottles just because it goes a little quicker so I'm just putting out an array of colors on my plate I don't I don't think I really want a black sky 
per se. And I've got me a good old flat brush. That's my go-to brush. So I'm going to start out. This is Prussian blue. It's a nice deep blue. And what I do is I usually work on my surface of my canvas and then I will finish off the edges after the painting is dried with either a complementary color or black or Payne's Gray. That's my go-to colors. And uh, sometimes you'll have to layer up colors because they're, you know, see-through at, the, at the first when you're putting down. I'm going to try to do this as quick as I can just so that I don't have you tied up for a long period of time, but I hope you'll enjoy this. So I do want a lot of contrast between the moon and the background. So that's why I'm going with Prussian blue. Instead of black, I wanted to have a little bit of color in the background. I didn't want it to be totally pitch black. I have so many paintings where I do use black as my background color and um, just trying to you know switch it up and do something a little bit differently so that every paint of mine is not black or has black in it which I so often love to use. I love the contrast of color against black. So all right. So I am going to dry this really fast. There might be a little noise. This is a really old blow dryer. That's why I love craft bottle paints. It's because you can dry it and keep moving quickly. Which, which is important. I make a lot of YouTube videos and um, people want kind of instant gratification. They want it to move very quickly. And if you don't move quickly enough for them, they'll move on. And, you know, so I try to make people happy. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of dioxazine purple in with this. I'm just going to go back and forth. I love purple. That's one of my favorites. So I'm just adding in a little bit. I'm not, it's not going to really, really show up that much. But I just want hints of it. Fiona. Okay, and then I'm going to move into true blue down here. So I'm going to kind of gradually add in a little bit lighter blue. You know, this is more of a typical traditional blue color. And if I need to blend, I just go back into that deeper Prussian blue. Don't, I don't want any little peaking of the white through the canvas so that's one thing I am paying attention to here okay so I've got the blue here I kind of want to lighten it up as it goes downwards not a whole heck of a lot but some but we're going to do a really cool thing here too so and I want to add a little blue up into here And I just, and if I need to go back and add some Prussian blue to soften it, stick in a little purple again. This is acrylics, everything's acrylics. Okay, I want to put in a little turquoise, just a little bit. Back into the Prussian blue. If I have any areas that need to be blended, or I can slightly wet my brush. So what I have underneath my painting is a puppy pad. I love to use puppy pads for acrylic pouring in my YouTube videos a lot. But it also is great for just keeping things off your surfaces if you're at home and you're painting on your kitchen countertop. 
or on a desk or you know wherever it's just a kind of an easy simple way to paint and protect your surfaces that you're painting on so if you wondered what this was it's a puppy pad I could even if I wanted to on this I could even go back up into the darker colors down here why don't we do that Betty okay so let's go back into the darker again down here just for fun this is not going to be a realistic painting it is a feel-good painting and then once this is fit when I finish the video I will upload it into the uh, master class challenge where the you know the challenge originated and I'll have it on my regular Facebook page here Sandra uh, I'll have it on my art page Sandra let artist which is my my professional art name Sandra let artist okay now I'm gonna go back into the the blue here All right, so now I'm just going to go back and forth a few times. I don't want any brush strokes to show. So you start from one edge of the canvas and you work your way to the other side. You don't stop anywhere in the middle because if you do, you'll have a stop and start point in your brush strokes and you don't want that. So here it's a little bit dried so I'm just adding some wet paint so that looks pretty good it doesn't have to be perfect so I'm gonna dry this really quick with my blow dryer so did y'all see that it was lifting up I'll go ahead and take it up see there is some bleeding so what I want to do is I'm gonna try to get a little of that with a paper towel a damp paper towel thank you Beth I love I always love creating and um, I thought well I probably need to do more live Facebook stuff I do most of my creating for YouTube and uh, now I have a lot of people that follow me there but I have just as many people that follow me on Facebook so I'm not trying to remove everything I'm just trying to get some of that hard color off all right so we're gonna go ahead and paint the moon in I'm gonna put down on my plate some white um, primary yellow this is going to be a little bit of a colorful moon and I have a little tiny photo that I, I printed off of Google it just shows me the basic look of the moon uh, I'm not going to try to you know copy it exactly and I may you know I'm going to make mine probably a little bit more colorful so that's a uh, true ochre primary yellow and this is uh, bright orange so we'll start with that I might and I'm gonna go ahead and put a little put a little brown on my plate I don't know if I'll use it but just in case so what I'm gonna start with first I'm gonna go now I'm this is my go-to brush is a about a half inch flat um, that I have a little bit more control with and I'm gonna go into my white and I'm going to kind of go around that edge and try to, first of all, just straighten up the rough edges just a little bit.
And if you need to turn your canvas, I'm getting blue paint on my arm here. The edge of the canvas was wet. So if you need to, you know, turn your canvas to where you have better control at a certain angle, just turn your canvas. Don't make it difficult for yourself. And I'm also going to just, as I go, I'm going to add some white in the center just to add some white so it's not straight primed canvas there. So for me, it's easier. I can see better if I control everything on the left-hand side of my hand because I'm right-handed. So if you're left-handed, and you might want to control everything on the other side. So just straightening out those edges a little bit, okay? So now I'm going to put a little true ochre into the white and a, maybe a touch of primary yellow. I'm going to put a little bit more primary yellow. And we're going to just go in and paint this whole moon real quick. Again, I'm Whoops. If you go over the edge, keep a damp paper towel that you can kind of wipe off right then. And uh, My hand, I don't have a very steady hand. That's why you have to make sure your canvas is dry. I dripped water. Um, if you have a dry canvas, then you can keep your hand on the surface of the canvas, and that kind of helps you keep a steady hand. Instead of holding your hand above the canvas, I'm trying to acknowledge everybody, but if I do that, I won't be able to stay on task here. But if you put your hand on your canvas, instead of leaving it floating above your canvas, you have more control of your brush. You're not as shaky. I don't have a steady hand at all. People say all the time, wow, you must have a steady hand, and I really don't. It's, it's just learning tricks to be able to um, keep your hand steady. You know, if I have to hold my hand with my other hand, you know, just to kind of keep it from moving. But I've got, I've got my bottom of my hand is resting on the canvas, and that keeps it steady as well. So, just um, doing that there. All right, so that's the base coat of the moon. Now we want to go into, I got some yellow on my canvas. We want to get some of that true ochre, and I mean, I'm, I'm going to put a little brown into it. And um, my canvas is sideways, that doesn't matter. I'm just going to kind of blotch in. Because the paint is still wet, I can kind of blotch it in. I want to I wanna yellow golden it up just a bit. Put a touch of brown back in it. I can take my finger and dab, and that will, you know, soften areas. You can hear my paint sticking to my finger a little bit. So it's, it is darker on this side of the moon here. So I'm going to bring, you can always go back and touch up the edges with the blue as well. Get some more of that brown, yellow. But as the paint dries, it's trickier to blend. So you've got to you've got to work fast with acrylics if you're trying to do any blending. You can you know tap tap tap. You can kind of smudge and so forth with your finger. If I want to 
add in some deeper color I can do that again put a touch of orange in it even it just warms it up a little bit more tap 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 blend with my finger welcome welcome I'm just doing a live painting to do some entertainment as a part of an art challenge so thanks for joining in and if you have to leave but you want to see it you can always you know replay it later too okay I'm gonna rinse my brush slightly and I want some of that color with some of the base color mixed in and I'm gonna go out here and um, just softly I can take a damp paper towel this is a good way to add some texture is just to um, put down a little bit of color have a damp paper towel and you can kind of dab and that will add some texture here and there It's now it's very slightly damp. If I get it too wet, you know, it's going to make it really watercolory. So, and go into that brown again and the ochre. And let's put a little bit, I'm going to put a little bit of blue. That was too much blue. So, let me rinse my brush. I don't want to. I want to feel green, a little orange. Just right over here. I want more gold and orange. Right up to the edge. If you go over the edge with the damp paper towel, you can kind of wipe it away you can't you can't wipe too hard and that's because that will you know take off what you have on the blue section okay so I'm just kind of deepening that it doesn't have to look like the real moon per se this is imaginary okay rinse my brush I'm going to uh, go into the white and I want to come along this side up towards the top and I can just kind of uh, rub that in with my finger a bit and go down around this edge Down here, it's going to be a little bit lighter. In places, can kind of just rub it in with my finger. And add just a little bit more white here, and I can also let this dry and come back later and add even more white sometimes if you put too many layers it will pull it off I can start to see a little blue there so I'm gonna come back and I'll touch that up in a little bit all right so I'm not worried about going into a lot of full detail with that because it's just the illusion of a moon and um, so I'm gonna take my pencil And I want to kind of draw a horizontal line right across the bottom of that a little bit. That just gives me a rough idea. And I'm going to go into the
the brown. So it's just going to be a base coat. And I'm going to um, I'm going to kind of taper it into the blue edges. So again, I don't want any white dots showing through from the canvas. So again, I saw this idea someone was painting on Facebook or YouTube, I forget well where, and I thought it was just a really cool concept. So it's not exactly like theirs, but you know, they it was an inspiration from them that made me think of doing this. So I want to get all of that white that's covering all the canvas. Go back and forth a bit. I can even I can even add some blue into this. This Prussian blue to deepen it. That's still wet right there, so I need to dry it. The control takes all your might to turn it off. It's just crazy. It sticks. Okay, so I'm going to go over that area. I don't want any of that moon to show. All right, now, and I see that's slanting a bit, so I can even that out here in a minute. I'm going to put some dark green on my plate. This is like Hauser dark green, and I'm going to put a little uh, festive green. And sour apple. I might even use some neon green. We'll wait on that and see. Okay, so I'm going to put that dark green in and I'm going to come up a little higher on the left hand side and kind of work my way over. I'm going to just kind of blend that down into the blue. And this is going to dry darker. Okay. While um, that is drying, I'm going to come back up here and touch up that white area on the side here where it was see-through looking. And I may still do that one more time or two. All right, so while that's, you know, that's dry, but the next thing I'm going to do, okay, so I've printed out clip art on Google. And you can Google any kind of clip art you want. You just put in the Google images and you put uh, flower clip art. I put couples clip art. And so this is just something I printed out. It's small. I needed it small. I didn't need it big. Uh, so I printed it out small, and this is the old-fashioned way. You go on the back side of your paper, and you scrub in pencil. So you don't need transfer paper. You just 
scrap, uh, scrub it in and lay it down and I'm going to tape it and I'm going to use a ballpoint pen and I'm going to go around the edges and I do this so many times with, you know, like my art here lately where I've been doing the lotus flowers. I'll, you know, print out a lotus and I'll just um, trace the edge of it onto a canvas. And I may even, you know, have the petals that I'll trace later. But that just, it gives you a pattern and you don't have to try to, you don't have to be a drawer. You don't have to be an expert drawer. You can just use something printed and I'm going to make sure that I've got all my edges pressed down pretty firmly. Okay, that's pretty good. I, I can see a little bit of it, the pencil marks and that's all I need. And I'm going to put a little bit of black on my plate. Don't need much. Alright, so I don't know if you can see, but so there's there's the couple sitting in front of the moon. And you could you could print out a dog you, silhouette, you could print out children, a family anything you want okay I just thought of a couple I was wanting to paint something that was kind of inspiring and that you know showed the relationship of, of two people and this you know was a good one it was just like a couple sitting there like looking into the moonlight and that was exactly you know something I was looking for And then you just paint in that silhouette with black. And I've gone to a smaller brush, one of my smaller ones that I have. So there's a few little gaps where the light is peeking through. I'm just trying to leave those. But otherwise, they're just sitting, they're basically just sitting on the ground. Thank you for watching. So I'm painting in their silhouette. I was going to do this on an existing acrylic pour, but I thought, well, you know, I wanted it to look like a night sky, and I didn't have any pours that were these colors, so I decided just to paint it from scratch. Okay, that her foot looks a little big, so then I'll just um extend her leg a little bit. 
and then those little tiny edges I'm gonna get my paintbrush really watery and just try to do what looks like kind of like she has longer hair maybe All right, so there's the couple. Didn't take much to do that. Pretty easy. All right, so now we're going to do something to make this land right here feel alive. So we're going to go over that darker green with the lighter green. But not behind them because they would cast a shadow, right? And this doesn't have to be level. This can be kind of lumpy if it needs to be. So, you know, we could kind of come inwards and kind of rub it with my finger if I want to. Okay, so going back into the darker green, I'm going to go behind them where they are and just fill in another layer to really make sure that's dark. That could almost really be black, and I'm going to kind of squiggle it in so it kind of blends in a little bit with the medium green. So it's kind of a layering up process in a way. I could even throw in a little bit of black right here just to really darken it right where their shadows are. But I'm not I'm not really trying to make the shape of them. I'm just adding some black in sporadically. So I'm going to go back into that green area and I'm going to add the lighter green. And just kind of taper it down very gently on the edges but coming towards them it can like be more mounds okay and I can kind of scatter it then I'm going to add some of this medium green back into it Alright, so they're just they're just sitting on their little imaginary piece of land right here. Alright, so now we're gonna add just really quickly. Gonna put more brown down on the plate. We're gonna come up. From this area with the tree kind of go off the canvas a little bit and I'm just kind of just uh, and over here just a very random tree
You can barely see it because it's on that deep blue, but we're gonna we're gonna make it stand out here in a minute. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna add a little uh, orange into the brown, maybe a little gold, and I'm gonna come along that edge. Okay, and I'm gonna kind of do that left edge, and then over here I'm gonna do the right edge because the moon is the light source. Now I'm going to switch to my smaller brush so I can have a little bit more control and I'm a we can even have these branches kind of join hands you know just make it a whole loving scene the tree the, the couple I'm highlighting everything on the right hand side on this part of the tree. And on this side, everything on the left hand side is highlighted. Keeping in mind where the light source is. Let's throw in a little bit of orange. That's too light. Let me pull out some red. I'm going to put that red and gold together. Let's try some red. That looks a little bit, I like that because it kind of pops. Bring it up a little bit into the limbs. Hopefully everybody can see. I get busy painting and I don't look at the camera. And a little bit just along those branches, just a little. And then I'm going to go back into that uh, primary yellow with some true ochre in it. So a really golden color. Maybe put a hint of orange. And that's like our extreme highlight on the tree. Now this is just a quickie painting so it's not going to be my best work or anything like that. I just wanted to get on and share something with you that you could watch and <clears throat> kind of escape for a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not think about all the crazy stuff happening in the world and just have some happy thoughts. and. That's, I think that's really a key important thing about art is it can kind of help us escape sometimes to a place that we otherwise would not be. Art is healing. So there's some areas I'm just trying to get some branches to show up a little bit better. <clears throat> now I'm going to go in back into the brown and just kind of 
dabble some brown back in here and there. So you kind of lose the tree on the outside edges a little bit. <clears throat> So what I'm going to do just to help accentuate the edge of the tree on the outside is take some of that turquoise blue and a little bit of the true blue so the turquoise and the true blue and a bit of water to help it just flow And I'm going to come around this left hand side of this tree and the right hand side. Just to give it a definition on the edge. Okay? Not a whole lot, just a little bit. That just helps give it some edges there. So I've got this crazy brush here. <clears throat> it is one of those brushes that was flat and a little bit wide. And I've used it so much that it's kind of splayed out. The bristles have kind of like gone blank because I've used it so much and I've pushed on it so much so that these are excellent brushes to do leaves and trees, bushes, things like that where you need chunks of stuff. So I'm going to put in chunks of purple. This See, this is where this is not going to be real looking. This is, this is total fantasy. So I'm putting in chunks of my purple with this old kind of worn out abused brush. <laughs> worn out and abused is what it is. And with trees, you don't you don't fill in the whole area. You do it in little sections. You leave spacing between it so you can see through. All right. So that's the first layer. Then I'm going to use purple pizzazz, which is a little bit lighter. I'm going to put my brush in that purple pizzazz and in chunks, and I'm going to go over the purple I already did. And kind of just do edges of the purple leaves. So I'm just doing them in chunks. See how the chunkiness of the bristles makes it almost look like separate little leaves? This is how I do tree paintings. I want it to come down over that moon even a little bit. Not much, but just a little bit. Alright. And just a little bit more over here. But you see how I'm not filling in the whole area. I'm just doing chunks. Hey, Mary.
Mary Joy and Penny. Rob Gears. Uh, Deborah. Linda. Alright. So now I want it to really kind of pop. I don't have neon purple, but I got a neon pink that I love. I'll rinse my brush out. So here's that neon pink. I'm going to mix a little purple pizzazz in with it so it's just not straight neon pink. And then I'm going to really lightly tap in. Not enough neon pink there. Especially where it's near the moon. So I'm just highlighting little sections. Got some white in there somehow. So I'm kind of hitting all the, the right hand areas of these clusters here. And then over here, I would hit the left hand areas. Okay. And then if I need to go in and add a little bit more of that purple pizzazz in again, just to make it like stand out a little bit more. I can. Now I've got to figure out what I want to do down here. <coughs> I think what I want down here is a root system and the root system will signify the roots of the family, the couple, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm going to start with some of this purple and brown mixed together and I'm going to kind of draw out, so you, I know you can't really see Add a little pink in there and see what happens. They didn't do this, but I'm doing it just because I think it would be kind of cool. I don't know how it's going to look, but... Hey, Deborah and Kim, Brandon, Wilson. I want it in a way to almost look like a heart. But again, it's, it's also supposed to be roots, so I'm just going to
I'm going to switch to my smaller brush. Maybe get a little of this neon pink and purple mixed together. So sometimes I just, um, I'll have a rough idea in my head of what I want to do, but then I just kind of let whatever flows through my spirit to happen on the canvas. I don't, um, I don't really try to direct it. I just allow what happens in my thought processes to happen. And, and then in some way I hope to have an effect on the viewer of my art, you know, as hopefully having some kind of a positive effect in the world through what I do. That's why I do what I do. So I'm just kind of drawing in the roots I'm adding in a little purple just to kind of bring in the purple from up there. Before I do any more, I kind of want to add more green down here before I go further. Um, and then come back with the roots. Because I like, I like the green... So I'm just going to kind of go in between the roots that I've already painted. And I also want to put Have a little neon green. I'm gonna put a little neon green right there. Really make it pop. And then just adding in some green. This is where I just get into whatever I'm doing and I just go with the flow and just decide at the spur of the moment this is what I want to do and just kind of follow my gut.
So y'all can put in the comments if you want to, um, you know, if I do this in the future, if there's something special that you'd like to see me paint that I can kind of do quickly. Um, I would love to know what your thoughts would be on that. I'm going to add some of that neon green in. So this is just totally wet on wet. That just makes it more colorful right here in the middle, which I really like that. And I feel like I want to bring in something brighter down here at the bottom. So I'm going to put some, oh, I just put some on my canvas, some neon blue. This is neon blue. I'm going to just brush it in. Neons are always transparent, so it's not going to show up on a dark color a lot. But I want to bring in some kind of a lighter source down here. See, I figure it out as I go. This is you know, not my typical kind of art, so I'm having fun with it just because it's something different. Thank you, Linda. I can put in a little turquoise. It almost looks like water. That's okay too. I'm gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna get some of that uh, just regular true blue. Kind of go in between. This probably doesn't appeal to men as much. It's you know probably more of a girly thing doing this kind of thing, but it's fun. So hey, if you guys have a request for something you want to see that's guyish, <laughs> you can let me know. I'm going to soften that turquoise a bit. That'll help. Kind of blend it in with the blue. Then I'm going to go up into my greens and sorry about that. I just was told by my husband that my canvas was off the viewing area. So I'm going to take my green out past this heart a bit. So they're kind of like on an island, like they're quarantined, you know what I mean? <laughs> so this is like, um, you know, they're in their own little universe, and it's 
it kind of brings us back to the roots of our family, right? This whole situation that we're in right now. The root system. How are the roots in your family? Let's bring a little green down here and kind of blend it in. Then I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something really cool here in a minute, which y'all know I love my, um, my writer tip bottles. Okay, so this is what a writer bottle is. Actually, it's the screw-on part that is so important. You screw it on to any color you want. So right now it's in a bottle of white paint. So the cool part is it has a needle that is coming out and I can come in and add some white wherever I want, but I can I can dot and make these little fine details. This is the coolest part about these things. I can just highlight just where I want some of the widest parts to be, the very, very lightest. I could even put a little and if it gets stopped up, like I haven't used this one in a while, you put the needle from the lid back in. Takes a steady hand. But um, I can just kind of come in and add white along the edges. I make it look grassy if I want. But the, the cool part about it is you can take it off and it actually unscrews and this comes out and you can totally unstop it if you've got you know, a stop up in it, you can put a toothpick in it, you can clean it out and do all kinds of cool things. You can put this, see I'm wiping out the inside of the lid. You can put this top on any color. So I'm going to screw back the needle in there. I'm going to put the thing that seals it on back on. I want to try it actually. And I'm going to put a few drips of water into my neon pink give it a few shakes give it a squeeze or two and at first the white's going to come out because that was what was there but now I can put little dots of that neon pink. I love using this writer tip on so many. This is what I use so much to embellish my paintings that I've been doing lately. Now I can even come in and I can draw that neon pink root. Yeah, and I don't want I don't want it straight and perfect. I want roots, you know, have all kinds of twists and turns. They're not straight, they're jaggedy. 
Okay, we can come over. But this is a great way to draw like really fine lines. So I'm making it intentionally very jaggedy. Do a few more over here. So I'm, not, I'm not putting too much of this because I want it just to be that illusion of that light source, you know. Get it. I'm trying to get it in the in the pen. Okay, got that on. All right. Um, I want to add just a little bit more highlights right along the top edge of the grass. I'll stick a little green back on here, neon green. Got the little neon yellow. Make that better than the white. Some of that neon green again. We can go up the tree a little bit.
medium green. This more neon blue again. Put just a pinch of white in that. Let's see if it does anything better. It's a little bit lighter. Yep, with neons, if you add white to neons, it'll make them pastel looking, so you have to be kind of really careful about adding white to the neons because they're so strange as far as changing the neon and taking it away. go back to my regular flat brush and I'm going to be finishing this up. I'm going to add a little bit of that um, neon blue with the true blue back here on the outside of the heart shape. Just kind of stagger it. some of that true blue. Let's see. I'm going to try I'm going to add a little bit more yellow in the moon. This is just really kind of watery.
a little bit more white back in and then I'm gonna be almost really done I'm just I'm playing around just a little bit here at the end. Dry it. Do a little bit more. Come on.
Thank you, Courtney. Thank you, Carrie. These tips, um, yeah, they're on back order right now. Deco Art has a website, so you might could look on Deco Art and in the search bar in the Deco Art website. Look for just writer tip, and you might find some there. Uh, it is on Deco Art as well, but it is. I think they've had a you know influx of using them because I know I use them like crazy, and they're apparently sold out right now. All right. So I'm going to bring it up so you can just see. Actually, I'll bring my phone down and get it off the thing above my, that way I can do it this way. So looking through my phone, it does not show the neon brightness of those colors as well as it does in real life. The neon is much brighter and more punchy. It might just be the lighting. Let me come over to a different area of light. I don't know if that helps or not. So it kind of the roots kind of form a heart. It's the couple, the trees, the moon. They're on their own little personal island. <laughs> their happy place. So I hope that this, you know, was just a feel-good, inspirational kind of video. Um, it took a little longer than I thought I would do. So, I'm just going to hold it here for a minute. Carrie just ordered some from Deca Art, so they do have it. Also, thank you, Sir Frit. Hey, Lauren. Thank you, Courtney and everybody. So, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it, you learned something from this video. This will be going into the uh, Quarantined Creatives Art Challenge Masterclass with my mentor, Matt Tommy, who's fantastic. I enjoy his mentoring group, and um, I'm always inspired by him and so many people in the group. It's become my family. So, I will say goodbye with the couple sitting in front of the moon. I hope y'all have a wonderful day and evening, and I will see you on the next video. I love you all, and I will also post this on YouTube, so it'll be in YouTube land forever and ever. Amen. So, thank you so much. Bye-bye.